All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you guys all for coming to hear about our mission trip to India. God has done some incredible things. Um, that we want to tell you all about it. We hope we can get it all in. We've got things for you to see later on and things to taste. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, with that, I'm going to ask Jeremy if he'll pray for us. Yeah. Then we'll just kind of talk through some pictures and video and let you see some things and under some th understand some things that we experienced. And also at the end, we are going to uh, give you some information about how you can help uh, India, how you can help ch the children over there. So, yeah. Father, we thank you so much for just uh, let us gather this, uh, this evening, Lord, freely. I pray that, Lord, you would... Uh, just forgive us of our sins, Lord, and I pray that you would place a spirit of repentance in our hearts. We pray that, that Lord, you would uh, set our hearts on fire for missions, Lord, and let us understand that the gospel is for everyone around the world, Lord. And I pray that you would just uh, bless us all with uh, your presence this evening, Lord. I pray that you would help us understand that, Lord, uh, that you're a good father. And I pray that uh, we would make this all about you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody together. Put your hands together like this. Namaste. <laughs> I'm going to stay. It's a, it's a greeting. That's all it is. I mean, you didn't just pray to some foreign god or anything like that. It's just a greeting, okay? Several months ago, uh, Jeremy and I were contacted by Jared Etheridge. And uh, he, he was talking with us a little about, he, goes, he got an opportunity for you guys. How would you like to go to India with me on a mission trip? Okay, well, <laughs> I got kids right now. Let's go, guys. No. Uh, and, but, you know, there's a little, there's excitement about that. You're like, yeah, we want to go. But there was a little, also a little hesitation, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's not a it's not a a fun t you know trip to the zoo kind of trip. It's it's not that's not what it is. Uh, we we did a lot of ministry there. There were a lot of things that were very hard for us. Uh, there were a lot of spiritual things that we dealt with while we were there. And so we want to kind of give you some information about all that. There's some pictures. Uh, go ahead and scroll, scroll through a few of those. Give about five or ten seconds and scroll through some of those. While, there, while you see some pictures up here, this is just some pictures of the countryside and things. Um, just to give you some information about India. India is a country of 1.4 billion people. That is many times more than the United States. Um, of the, those 1.4 billion people, 74.3% are Hindu with only 2.2% evangelical Christian. Mm -hmm. That means they understand the gospel. They understand, they can, they can tell you that they, are a, they will be a born-again Christian, okay? And so uh, of those 1.4 billion people, there are 154 people groups of a million-plus people within India. And of those 159 people groups, 133 of them are unreached, meaning that they do not have access. No one has come to them with the gospel. So we're talking about an extremely lost country, a country that does not know Jesus. Um, there's a caste system, and I'll let Jeremy talk through some of this stuff too, but the, the caste system is, is basically, you know, the priestly caste is the highest caste, and then there's uh, the, the lower class people, and, the, and it goes down to a just kind of really a very poor amount of people. Most country, people in the country are extremely poor. 43% uh, are unevangel unevangelized at all. It means that they've got no... No one has ever gone to them with the gospel of all of the entire country. It is one of the. It is number ten of the most of the, of the top fifty most persecuted countries in the world. Um, you can see here there are several pictures that they were just going through. Uh, there's a lot of things that grow there. What are, what are some things that? Uh, uh, yeah, so we found some cocoa uh, trees, coconut trees, everything you'd really find in a, in a tropical location. I think it, where we were at was really close to the equator, so just about everything. Uh, grew there. There's some cocoa plants there that weren't fully ripe, but we we, we ate tangerines that were fresh. Uh, the banana uh, branches were, were great to see. Just hundreds of bananas growing on every uh, on on the trees. So just a tropical climate, very humid where we were at, very hot, uh, extremely hot, and it was winter time when we were there. So uh, we're still facing 90, 90 degree weather with probably. 85 to 90 percent humidity. So uh, it was it was difficult for us when we got there. But yeah. Yeah, so. this is a banana, this is a, like of the, of the banana plant itself, the stalk going up, this is just part of it. That's what it looks like. It looks like it's corrated. You can't take it and just rip it against the grain, okay? It doesn't work that way. You can rip it you know, with the grain, but you can't rip it against the grain. They have to be that way in order to survive the tropical storms and things that come through. Um, like he said, it's very hot, I mean, yep. and it's in the winter, <laughs> and that means 90 degrees is cool to them. 
Um, a few things that you're seeing here in the next few pictures, there are some pictures of uh, just the country itself. Uh, very poor. Um, they don't have sanitation like you and I have. I mean, when you and I have trash, what do we do with it? We throw it away. Well, we throw it in what? A trash can. <laughs> the trash can in India is on the ground. You just put it on the ground yeah, because Paul, they have no trash. <laughs> I'll kind of speak to that a little bit. I, I had an empty tra- uh, cup that I was drinking a Coke out of, and I asked the render the pastor that was guiding us around. Uh, I asked him if there was a trash can anywhere, and he said no. And then he looked back into the uh, back seat, and he said, actually, yes. And then he grabbed my cup and threw it out the window. Um, so it was just kind of unique to see those kind of things. They don't have any sanitation. They kind of just build up a trash pile wh- right where they're at, and then they'll, they'll burn it whenever they're ready to or or maybe never, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so um, this is, I mean, on the road, you're going to see lots of different traffic that's there. Um, this is a lorry. I mean, you can see how high it's stacked. That wouldn't go in America. Uh, we, that would be go against a lot of regulations. But on the back side, you can see it's really pretty. They painted it up. There's lots of different signs on it. It looks really cool. But those signs, especially there at the bottom lo- along the edge of squares, those are uh, symbols for their gods, and so um, in India, H- Hinduism has over 330 million gods. 330 million. Mm-hmm. How many gods do we serve? One. There's only one true God. And so this is why the country is so lost. They're so wrapped up in the gods around them. Now we have, in America, people worship a lot of different things. I mean, there's only one true God. They only worship, we worship a lot of different things mm-hmm. just like they do. Those people need to know about Jesus. And that's why we went. Um, on that, that's a lorry, uh, a big truck, and on the road, uh, there's a lot of different types of vehicles. Cars, we, we, were in a, we were in a car most of the time, and they were not big cars. Melody, where's Melody? Melody, <laughs> what kind of vehicle do you drive? A big one, right? She's got one of those Expedition XLT things or something, whatever it is. It's a big one, right? But it can haul a lot of people. You can haul a lot of people in these cars, <laughs> or at least they do. Um, But they're little small hatchbacks. Um, So you've got cars on the road. You've got motorcycles, motorcycles everywhere. As a matter of fact, I saw a motorcycle with uh, the the husband was sitting on the front. He had a baby asleep on front of him. And then he had his his daughter behind him and then his wife behind him right there. So all crammed together on on one motorcycle. And those, so you've got motorcycles, cars. You got lorries, you got monkeys, uh, you got uh, children, you got dogs. Uh, and it's the weirdest thing ever here. You see dogs getting hit by cars all the time over there. No dog gets hit by a car. It's not like they have an instinct that a car is coming. They'll get off the side of the road. Um, so you got monkeys, you got dogs, you got just about uh, you got goats, you yeah, have goats. cows, and, and a lot of it's it's weird. The cows there have a different type of caste system because a lot of you know Hindus and Buddhists they they believe in reincarnation. So some cow may be a low caste cow, or another cow may be a high caste cow. Um, something we kind of talked about with Narendra there was. You know, if you hit a person, you may get thrown in prison for a year. But if you hit a cow, you'll get you'll get thrown in prison for maybe what four or five years. And uh, yeah. so that was one of the the weird things you saw. But but this traffic was chaos, and mm-hmm. uh, we were about halfway through our trip, and and almost got t-boned by a car. And uh, <laughs> I said, you know, you definitely know you're in India when you're not frightened by those kind of things anymore. It was just kind of normal. So yeah, uh, traffic was definitely uh, definitely crazy. Yeah. Water buffalo, snakes, yep. Yep. everything that you can imagine, all on the road trying to pass each other. At the same time then you have vehicles motorcycles cars that instead of going down and turning around and coming back to some place over here it's just like hey let's just drive down the wrong side of the road it's fine and so you got cars and cars and motorcycles and everything coming at you so it's a lot of fun uh, but one thing these lorries are really cool because the lorries have horns on them I mean, you know here if you if you honk your horn that's an offense to somebody somebody's about to jump out their vehicle and beat you up that's not the way it is in India. They expect you to use their, your horn. They want you to use on, on the back of the lorries, sometimes they'll say, please sound horn, please. That's just the way they use English, right? So they want you to sound your horn. They want to know where you're at. And they have cool horns. We need to get some of these in America. So I'm going to turn this up so you can hear it. Okay, here's another one. Here's a mix. (laughs) 
That's how they are right there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Really cool. We need everybody needs one of those on your horn. I mean, in your car. It'll be really cool. Um, other things that we can, I mean, you can see as you travel through. I mean, everywhere they've got temples. Um, there's a big temple in Anavaram. Where, and I'll, we'll do some pictures of that later. But there are these different temples to different guys. Every even every little small village, every neighborhood will have some type of statue, some type of god that'll have a handout like this. And the idea behind that is to ward off evil spirits. In shops, you'll see things hanging like lemons or um, peppers or other things. Yeah, pumpkins even, yeah. yeah. So you could see different different things. But it was just very, very difficult to kind of see. You could kind of see the, the feel the, the spiritual oppression around these temples. And, uh, you know, Paul and Jared wanted to keep going by these temples, and I wanted to stay as far away from them as possible. But uh, they were everywhere. And it, it was just fascinating to... to, to to see where they were at, and you could just feel the, the, the depression around them. So. so in the middle of the road, like you, you just be driving down the road, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden there are these barriers right there that you have to somehow maneuver around. I mean, you could be driving mm-hmm. 65 miles. Well, you, they don't really go that fast, but you could be going down the road pretty quick. Also, this barrier is in the road, and the reason why is they just want to slow down traffic, so they just throw these barriers out there. Yeah. A lot of fun. Um, the next picture here, this is uh, one of the things that's on the road. It's called an auto um, it's got one wheel in the front, two wheels in the back. Uh, you'll see one a little bit later, but the, you can pile like 17 women in one of these because I, I saw that. We counted it, yeah. <laughs> and then here's a uh, just a tanker, and you can see they have English on the back uh, in the writing. Uh, there's a lot of uh, British influence still there because Britain controlled India for a, a long time, and so there's a lot of English um, um, influence there. But you can see it says highly inflammable. I don't know. Not in plain. <laughs> so here's another next picture is uh, just a picture of us yeah. getting some tea that day. And then here's another picture of this. We, we were in a mall. And, not, and that, they have a lot of English things, but not all of them make sense. Like just down the near, the near the bottom on the green there on the left, it says, be calm and do not give any room for panic. Walk and do not run. And then the next one says, if you encounter serious difficulty in evacuation, lie flat and try to attract the attention of rescue team. So... <laughs> I'm not sure that's the best advice in a fire, but anyway, um, that's a that's a cow pulling a cart. This is also on the road too. At the same time, cows mm-hmm. pulling carts, and these are this a, a low cast cow pulling a cart. There, um, next one's motorcycles. Um, next one you can see is uh, you can see a pa- power line there. This is why they. I mean, like every day, at least a hundred times. No, not that many, but maybe four or five times a day, you you actually have brownouts. I mean, you'd be in your room or someplace, and the power just goes out for about 15, 20 minutes and comes back on a little bit later. So it's not any, not any, uh, not any worry to them. Um, next one is, the, I mean, just a picture of one of the plants. They've got several plants yeah. out there. All right, now here's the fun one, food. What did we eat in India, all right? All right, here's one thing. It looks like a scorpion, but it's not a scorpion, I promise. There's another picture, next one. What is it? What is it? Who thinks it's a cat? (laughs) Who thinks it's a dog? (laughs) It is a bird. Very good. It is a bird. It's just a little bird that's around there. That was probably one of the be- that was probably one of the better meals we ate too, uh, yeah. uh, flavor wise. So, yeah, uh, it, it may look look horrible, but it actually had some some good chicken like flavor to it. So. Right. Uh, um, next one, you can see this is a place we w- had breakfast at every day. Uh, next yeah, one's the same. Picture. I just want to speak. This is the yeah, same same place. This is where we'd eat breakfast, and and you kind of we think of breakfast here in America. We think of something sweet with some eggs and some bacon, and they really had the same meal over and over again. We ate probably the same four meals while we were in India. Uh, there was nothing sweet about breakfast. It had a lot of spices, a lot of onions, uh, a lot of different sauces. You, yeah, you can go to the next picture. But one thing I wanted to say about this restaurant, yeah, that's what we ate for breakfast, and those pastes were not very good. Uh, you know, they weren't, weren't very flavorful. But uh, the Hindu guy that, that cooked at this restaurant, he may have been the owner, but just showed us immense love. And that's something we'll kind of talk about throughout some of these pictures. Is, is It's just fascinating to see that they, they saw an American and they just wanted to show us love. They wanted to show us kindness. Uh, they kept bringing us food. You know, I really try to tend to eat fast, but in India, you, you want to slow down because if you eat too fast, they just keep bringing you more and more of it. Um, but yeah. 
it was just slowly, amazing. slowly. Yeah, it's slowly, slowly. But just amazing to see that a Hindu guy, and he knew we were Christians, um, and, and being in a hostile part of India, just to show us love um, and kindness. So that's something I just wanted to talk about there. This is br- pretty much lunch right here every day. Uh, you have rice. Uh, that's the bird that's on there. It, I mean, don't don't think it's gross. It's really good. Trust me. Um, and then there's you either have chicken curry. Well, sometimes you'll have a mixture of all this: chicken curry, chicken biryani, chicken torrandini. Um, tandoori. You got the tan, yeah, sorry, tandoori. Um, and then you've got uh, boiled egg, uh, onion, a lime. We had we had a crab one day. We had mm. they have fish that they'll bring out sometimes, but the fish has a lot of bones in it, so it's really kind of iffy to eat. So um, we did eat it though. And then the next one, this is tea time. Every once in a while, you just got to have tea. That's another British influence, I think. And teacups are about that big right there. I mean, you get a little small tea um, and a, or coffee. Yeah. Coffee's the same way. Um, taste the same. Both tea and coffee taste the same. <laughs> yeah, they do. It's hard to tell the difference between tea and the coffee. <laughs> yeah. um, this is thumbs up. Notice there's no B. <laughs> this is a Coca-Cola product. Yeah. Uh, I actually have some of that you can try here in a little bit. Um, but, um, yeah, it, it's good. I promise you. All right, so let's look at some of the people. Uh, see, these are some of the people here that we encountered. These were guys at the hotel. You want to say anything about that? Yeah, the, the two guys on the left here, they, they kind of mingle around you. I, it's just they can tell you're Americans almost, and, and Jared kind of kept saying he was from Africa, but it was pretty uh, easily distinguished that he's from America. And uh, These two guys on the left just kept mingling around Jared all week long, and, and really towards the end of the trip, they asked Jared to pray for him at night. They worked at the hotel we were staying at. We thought they were Hindus. Um, and then Jared had a Bible out on the table, and they asked him if it was an English Bible. And we really got to talking about these guys. Paul was asleep in the hotel, and Jared and I were I talking to him, and, and uh, they were Christians. And actually, I mean, 18-year-old kids working all night long at the hotel uh, and just wanted to, to, to absorb everything we had to tell them about Christianity. So that was really neat. So um, This is a house we went and prayed for, um, some people in the church. Mm-hmm. Um, is this the big house? That's the four-story house. Yeah. So this is a four-story house. Yeah. Some of these people were, were church members, and they owned a lot next to the church. Um, and they wanted to sell the church to this lot, which is nothing really to look at. But it, they wanted, what, $10,000 yeah, for 10, a lot? Yeah, 10000 American dollars. And, and I, I'll kind of speed through these stories a little bit. But again, Jared and his boldness, we went and prayed for this house. And the lady who owned that property next to the church, they, we kind of felt like she was asking a lot of money for the property. And uh, Jared, just his boldness told her that she really needed to be praying about uh, her heart being changed um, to donate that, that land and, and so that the, the Lord's work can continue to move in India. So uh, y- y'all raised up a, a, a great guy in Jared. He's really, you know, just a powerful guy to be around. So I just wanted to talk about that real quick. Yeah. This is another place we were praying here. I think that's at the church mm-hmm. right there. Um, go to the next one. That's Jimmy. <laughs> they call that's Jeremy Steve. and Jimmy. <laughs> His but name is Stephen, <laughs> but they call him Jimmy. Uh, I don't know. We don't need to. Yeah, yeah that's Narandra's son. He's cute. And then the next one there, you can see uh, Jeremy just praying for the mm-hmm. kids and spending time with him. Jer- I'm really proud of Jeremy. I just want to say it real quick. I'm really proud of Jeremy. Jeremy did a great job there. Um, he spoke. He, he preached several times. Uh, he, he interacted with those kids and loved on them, interacted with people. Um, there were people at the hotel who... Uh, that uh, Jeremy were, was able to speak to and, and minister to. And so uh, he did a great job while, while we were there. Thank you. All right. So here's the thing. This is the, this is the trip. This is how it goes. We're going to kind of give you a kind of overview real quick. Um, we, have, we had plans, right? We made plans. You, you, we got hotels. We got, we got plane tickets. And some of that fell through because when we left uh, Dallas uh, that day, what, November 4th, Yep. It was rainy, bad weather. The plane that was coming in from Houston that we were supposed to get on was delayed a couple hours. So that made us delayed a couple hours, which made us miss the flight in Chicago, uh, which caused some issues because they make you take a COVID test before you go. And not only did you have to take a COVID test, you had to take it 72 hours before, you're, before you leave, before you start your journey. But since our journey was interrupted, we get into Chicago and we got to go find another place because our journey was interrupt, interrupted and we won't enter the country in that 72-hour frame, so we got to go get another COVID test. Yeah. So Saturday morning, we wake up, we go get a COVID test. Jeremy says, hey, you want to just go to the airport? I said, let's go to uh, McDonald's, just in case. It's a good thing, because I had to take another COVID test. <laughs> and you just don't know how bad I hate COVID tests. 
And uh, so I took three of these things to go to this trip. I knew, I mean, it had to be a special trip because of that was going on. Um, then we flew from Chicago to Delhi and Delhi to Vishakhapatnam. Uh, Jared made it a day before we did. So there's Jared. Hours. That's Narendra on the left. Um, that, that flower lay, that is common everywhere we went. Um, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, but Jared was able to go. Um, but Jared made it, but his luggage didn't. So you'll see Jared in the same outfit several times. Uh, <laughs> there's some Bibles that he's handing out to the pastors. Some of you were able to give mm-hmm. in order for these pastors to have a Bible. So yeah. that's really awesome. Um, and there's another picture of the pastors there. Okay, so now we come to, to our arrival in Delhi. So when in Delhi... We get our own flowers. Um, when we got back, nobody met us with flowers. I was a little disappointed. Yeah. But, so let me show you how that, how that, how that went down. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Okay, if you didn't hear what they were saying, which is hard, they're saying, welcome, sirs, and the sign, they're holding the sign that says, welcome, sirs. They were very kind. Everybody was very kind. Um, those flowers are, are just a symbol of their, uh, you know, their affection, their love for you, their appreciation for you. Um, they purchased these things for us. No, we're not baptizing anybody tonight. No, these are not our pajamas. Um, these are kind of traditional dress for uh, Hindu, uh, you know, not a Hindu, but uh, for someone in India, right? Not, not for a Hindu priest, yeah. I think it's somebody in India. Uh, as a matter of fact, some of the pastors wear these when they preach on Sunday morning. So, you know, you might, you might just see me this Sunday morning. So, um, Yeah, I, I kind of just want to talk on that one a little bit. You know, when we Paul got there, we, we, we were supposed to travel. It was supposed to be 40 hours from the time we left Dallas till the time we got to Visakhapatnam, and it ended up being about 73 plus hours and we were exhausted right before or right after that video of um, them greeting us with flowers they brought us into their house and this is Narendra the pastor's house and it's it's a one bedroom their bed is on the right um, and they washed our feet um, and it was just a powerful statement you know here in the states I've always thought that was culturally weird to wash feet even when you read the story of Jesus washing the disciples feet um, and what they washed our feet with buffalo milk, right? Buffalo milk, yeah. Um, and it was just a powerful, powerful thing. They just wanted to thank us for being in India, and it was the best they had. I mean, that was the best that they had was the buffalo milk, and uh, they brought us into their house and wanted to, to thank us um, to go into India to proclaim the gospel. So that was just a powerful moment. It's having our feet washed, and uh, it was it was really special. Yeah. Um, next picture there is Jeremy uh, with the kids. Man, the kids love Jeremy. They do. Everybody loves Jeremy, but the kids love him. Uh, the, and those are some of the orphans. As a matter of fact, you'll see some pictures of those if you want to look at some of this material later on. Um, hotel life. So we roughed it, um, as you can see over the next few pictures. Um, stupid turkeys that wake, wake me up every morning. Yeah. Um, and ducks. Um, but you can kind of see we're just roughing it out here um, by the pool. <laughs> This was by, uh, as nice as you can get in India. I mean, the rooms, I wish I'd had a picture of the bathroom in the room a little bit. It, it's okay. I mean, it's not your five-star hotel in America, but it's probably as good as you're going to get there. So that's all, we, we, that's all arrival. Now, let's get into day one. Uh, this, this, day one is our Tuesday. Yeah. 
Maybe. I don't, I don't I really remember. Tuesday. So, yeah, probably. I'll yeah. take Paul's word for it. I think it's it. Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> so, this is one, the, on this day, we go to two different villages. Uh, Jeremy will preach the first one. I'll preach the second one. Uh, and this is the first village. This is where Jeremy was preaching. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, really as the first time I'd spoken, I led my father's funeral service. Um, but this was the first time I'd ever preached. And it was really just, a, it wasn't hostile in the sense that, that anybody was angry or preaching the gospel. But there was just a lot of movement going on, um, a lot of just people walking in and out of there. And uh, But I was so jet lagged, I don't really even remember preaching that, that day. So um, it was getting our bearings going. So These people, this, that's their church right there. There's poles. Mm-hmm. That's, that's their church. And these people were happy to come and, and worship. Um, this is a village that pretty much no American has ever preached in before. Yep. I mean, they may have seen, seen some Americans. Matter of fact, just on, on that, we're, we're celebrities there. I mean, everybody wanted to take their picture with us. Matter of fact, somebody, some guy got in Jeremy's face like this far from his face, <laughs> um, just checking him out. Uh, because And people are taking our picture while we're eating. It's like paparazzi around us. It's really funny. Um, but, but here, we, we're giving out uh, rice, bread, and clothing mm-hmm. to the people because um, they just don't have anything. Yeah, each, uh, probably this village is probably about an hour drive time from any, from any you know, town, um, any stores. But nobody has vehicles there. So, I mean, we're talking probably a day or two walk or trek. And most of these people have nothing. They work in rice fields. So, um, bringing rice and, and clothing was, uh, you know, instrumental for them. There's a... They always had a chair for us to sit in. Everybody else had to sit on the ground, but we had chairs for us. And it's not polite to refuse, so we didn't. No. Um, <laughs> this is the second village. Um, there's our little car in the back. That's why we drove around most everywhere. But um, you can see the, the kids. There are a lot of kids and women. Uh, not a lot of men uh, in, in these places. Um, this is my birthday that day. So um, I'm, I, I get to preach on my birthday. There are, there are, there are some people saved. Yep. Um, and they actually sang happy birthday to me. And I wish I had brought, put the video up there, but it, it's pretty funny. Uh, how, how, you, have, you can ask Gade later. He, he can interpret for you exactly what it was said because he does it pretty good. But um, these are some of the people we prayed for afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to say something about this guy? Yeah, so this guy, he, he showed up kind of straggling whenever Paul started preaching. He looked completely disinterested in everything Paul was speaking about. And uh, I think he preached over the prodigal son on that, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and it just his mindset changed, and you could kind of see his demeanor changing over the uh, time that Paul was preaching. Uh, we don't know if he gave his life to the Lord there, but definitely was, was wanting us to pray for him and kind of see a, a definite dynamic change in his, his uh, posture and just his attentiveness. So, uh, you know, the gospel's for everybody, and we kind of saw that taking place. I mean, and then we'll talk about that more and more, but it was just amazing to see that. I believe this is one of the ladies who received Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, in the village there, and then there's a couple more pictures there of us being able to pray over some uh, uh, very malnourished people. They, I won't go into details, but they couldn't they couldn't sit very long. I'll just say that uh, very very painful for them to sit uh, any any length of time. So that's day one, and that doesn't seem like a lot there. We're we're trying to go through pretty quickly here, but there was a lot. Uh, day two and three were the pastors' conference. So this is. Uh, um, this is what we really kind of came to do. We're, we're the speckers. Uh, <laughs> Jared, myself, and, and Jeremy were the speckers. Yep. Uh, and there's another picture of that kind of past, Pastor Jaw. I guess that's Jared. We, yeah. I, I guess. I don't know. Uh, we uh, don't know who that is, but Jer- Jared doesn't know either. But Pastor Jaw and team. So. Yeah. I'm just uh, a supposing we're team. So. Um, and then that's the this is another course. video. Uh, this is what happens when you walk into a pastor's conference. This the first what, day. This is what happens when you walk in anywhere right, in India. Yeah. Yeah. So. Nobody had this for us when we came home. This dude just landed on top of our heads. You're tired of throwing it. Many, many flowers gave their lives for us this past And that's me, that's their, their, uh, their music, man. We had flowers in our glasses and our shirts and our, our backpacks. Bibles. 
everywhere. Underwear, yeah. everywhere. You know, it's just it was just everywhere. Um, and when they do worship, um, these are some pictures of the pastors conferences, the men that were there, and some women too. About 120 that, that came to uh, be a part of the conference. Um, one of the things about worship music, and I mean, Stephen, I don't know if you want to take any notes from this or not, but uh, they, they they put speakers on the stage, not facing the crowd, but facing the speckers, and uh, they tur- and if they if there's a volume control, it only has two knobs, lo- yeah. off and on all the way, and they just turn that dude up, and it's loud. We couldn't even hear each other. Yeah sitting next to each other it was so loud but they have them also outside so here's one thing so everything that we did like at the pastor's conference in some of the churches that were in, that were in they were in villages they had speakers that were outside and so we're preaching mm-hmm. and we're telling people you know turn from your false gods and turn to the one true living god and that's going all throughout these communities yeah. of all of these hindus who are worshiping false yeah. gods Speak so. to that, just the, the noise of the music some days. I mean, you could, you, we would be traveling. We wouldn't know where we're at, but you could always know when you were getting close to the church because you could hear the music playing yeah. from like three or four blocks away. Yeah. Uh, so we always knew when we were getting close to a church. And they're, yeah. they were busy like worshiping like an hour or two sometimes before we even got there. Yep. Most of y'all complain about going over an hour. <laughs> They've been worshiping two hours before we can get there, mm-hmm. before we can preach. So. Yep. Um, and so this right here, you can see these guys that are standing up. There's like four or five guys that are standing up right here. Um, I preached the gospel that day. What is the gospel? And I preached that. And those guys responded to Christ. These are pastors yeah. because they'd never heard the gospel. They heard about Jesus. They've heard about him, but they didn't, they didn't know how to put faith and trust in him. So, um, And every day, this is, they, these were guys who were sitting outside. But every day we, we fed them. I mean, like they, there was food for them. But we actually served them, which was really pretty cool. And they all took notes That's and everything. That's all the pastors. And I just kind of speak on the, the condition of the church we were at with the pastoral training for those two days. I know when Paul one time and then when Jared uh, were, were given the, the outlines of what they were discussing for the pastor training, the power went out for about 30 minutes. It's 90 degree weather. The fans stop and, and Jared just says amen. Uh, you know, and we're sweating. We're pouring sweat. Um, and these pastors have traveled, and they, some of them are spending the night inside the church we're at, um, and nobody bats an eye. Nobody gets up to leave. Nobody starts complaining about the internal temperature of that church. And uh, it's just amazing to see that their desire to be within the church uh, and living in community with each other and breaking bread and devoting themselves to the, uh, to the Word of God. So, All the kids and all the pastors all want to take our picture, too. So... so. <laughs> this is one of the most memorable pictures I have from the trip is these two kids that ended the pastor train. They kind of were poking their heads in and watching us. And I, I invited them in and I got the chance to pray over them. And I, I started crying a little bit. And uh, the kid on the right, he just he took his palm of his hand and he wiped my, my cheek to wipe the tear off my uh, face. And uh, just to see the love that, that, that they that you received. They went outside and made some flowers for me, a little flower mum. And they put it on my head, and they just called me a, a king. And, and it was just amazing to see, uh, you know, when we're in the midst. It was almost like a Mar- Mary and Martha type of story. Uh, but I just wanted to speak to that real quick. So I had to, had to check Jeremy's luggage before we went home because he's trying to <laughs> smuggle kids in. And, you know. <laughs> he would have. Yep. I would have too, though. They were yep. some cute ones. Uh, so that, the, the conference, I'm thinking this is my correct, was Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, Thursday night. After the conference mm-hmm. was over, uh, there's a big temple in Anavaram. And this is a temple, I, th- I think it's, it's a fertility type temple mm-hmm. in it, mm-hmm. dedicated to, uh, like if, if you want to have a child, you'll, t- you'll go to the temple and, and you'll sacrifice, like the men will have cut their hair off. They'll have them shave their hair off and sacrifice their hair to one of the gods. And uh, it's in order to get blessing so that you'll have a child. And so this is one of these, this is a temple, it's, it's huge. Um, and that, there's a big hotel there that you can stay at. Um, and there's also, we got, I have a video here too of, of some of what we experienced there. But um, very creepy. Um, the hair that was on fire, lit on fire, stunk. Um, you, you'll see that here in a picture in a minute. Um, but, I mean, I, whenever I was there, my head was just swimming. I, I was very, very dizzy. 
and I think that everybody kind of felt somewhat that way. Yeah, that's where they're lighting something, and it was a horrible smell, but this is a place where hair. we prayed, and, and really, Narendra probably shouldn't have took us there to this temple, and just the fact that, that that's a place, if, if we would have preached that, we, we would have got stoned, I mean, on the spot. Yeah, it it wasn't us. playing around there, and it was very, like I said, spiritually oppressive. It was very weird. Uh, the smells were horrible, um, and, and as soon as we got into this town, there was there was some city gates, and we just started praying over the, the city gates, and it was just a very uh, uh, oppressive place to be so this is uh the actual video just kind of and you can hear the music playing it a little bit it's very low maybe just real quick um you'll you'll hear some more of their music here later later so one of the things that we talked about uh through the trip is that you know god has just been blessing us i mean already and just in the few days we were there uh, we saw, some, we've already seen a few people come to know Christ, but just here uh, is something we were talking about. I'm going to let Jeremy explain all of that. Yeah, so so Paul was saying it was a very fruitful trip, and, and for, for Jared and Paul, I felt like up to this time it was very fruitful, and I was I was struggling spiritually. I, like I said, I, I was feeling attacked a lot of places, and I know the night before this took place um, was the day after, or the day of the ending of the pastoral training, and, and I called Amber in just tears and told him, you know, Jared's being effective, Paul's being effective, I just don't feel like I, I have any place here in India, and I was just beaten up, I didn't sleep at all that night, and then we got to breakfast the next morning, and, and we were talking about the Holy Spirit, what does it look like in Acts chapter 6, when you talk about men, you know, full of the Holy Spirit, um, and then not even 10 minutes after that, we pull up to this bucket, and out of nowhere, we don't know why this bucket was there, I uh, don't know why this water was running, uh, but, but this water is just run, running into this five-gallon bucket and just overflowing it. And, and, you know, we just start talking about this is what the Holy Spirit looks like. Uh, just when it comes in, it consumes somebody and overflows in somebody. And it was amazing. You can't really tell from this picture, uh, but there's a gutter that, that this water is overflowing into. And, and I, I talked about how the fact that this is what the Holy Spirit does uh, in, in somebody is that they, they'll overflow them and it's pure and uh, there's nothing tainted from it. And then oftentimes the Holy Spirit runs you through the gutters um, and personally. Um, through convicting you of sin, but also just uh, taking you to the worst of the worst and proclaiming the gospel. And I really think that was just a, an amazing picture of what, if you, you ask yourself, what does the Holy Spirit look like in somebody, uh, that's, that's a picture and a video of what I believe it is. And it, it was just, I really felt like this was whenever, for me, uh, the Spirit started moving. This is, you can kind of keep going to the next pictures here. I think this is day four. Uh, that was the morning of, and then we drove about an hour, and um, this is where I, I preached, and um, I really felt like this was the first time I really truly preached the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I felt like it was just flowing. I actually, I was having trouble, you know, I can preach a message, and I can really kind of get emotional, those things, but how to tie the gospel, and it's all about the G uh, gospel of Jesus Christ, and um, I modeled my message after what Paul taught about on that, that um, last day of the pastoral training, um, and I told our Sunday school class on Sunday is I paid thousands of dollars, and I spent four or five days of travel to learn from our pastor what the gospel is all about, um, and this guy, that's all he did in India was preach the gospel. This is the, the first time where I'll, you know, if I can look back on my life, and that's, that's where I preached the gospel for the first time, and it was just powerful to see how the Holy Spirit was moving in this trip. This was a difficult day for me. Yep. Um, for me, this was this was a day I just didn't want to do anything. Um, it, I was I don't know. I just felt very spiritually oppressed that day. Um, very not looking forward. To, I was supposed to speak this evening, not looking forward to it at all. Um, and I don't know. I can't tell you any reason why. I just didn't. Um, very very nervous about it. And I, and I think maybe probably because what God was about to do through through this evening uh, through me was uh, was really powerful and and. You know, the enemy's working overtime to try to, you know, mess me up on that whole deal. Um, so it was a long, Indian time is different. <laughs> if they say, yeah, we're going to come by and pick you up at 7 o'clock and we're going to go preach in this village, you can expect somewhere between 7 and 9 o'clock that they're going to show up. So uh, about 7.30, Narendra shows up with a car, drives us to this area, and uh, we get out. It's dark, okay? And this is the thing I hear when I get out of the vehicle. So 
this is, there's a smaller temple, not as big as the one in Anavaram, but this is a smaller temple that's there. And they're, I mean, they've got these loudspeakers everywhere, and they're blasting these temple worship songs and temple chants. All this stuff's going on in the background. This, to me, is like Acts stuff in the New Testament. Um, it's like Paul preaching in the New Testament. Not that I have any anything, you know, with that. I'm not, not trying to toot my horn or anything like that. But mm-hmm. in this, it just felt like this is New Testament type of stuff. So uh, this is a picture. This is the pastor of the church here. Mm-hmm. Um, we're giving him a Bible. And this is the church. I mean, they're just in the street, all, all down the street. Um, people sitting on uh, in the houses on the rooftops. Yeah. This, this right here where the speaker's at, that's a... Uh, that's that's the, where their church used to be. They tore it down so they could build a new one because the church is growing. Yeah. And so I preached the gospel that night. I, I preached the story of the prodigal son. It talked about how the prodigal son, um, you know, he had rebelled against his father. But, but his father longed to forgive him, and God longs to forgive us. And then I, I pulled in the gospel that God, there's one true God. He's created everything. Uh, everybody, mm-hmm. Everyone, everything, he knows you personally. And The Bible tells us that we have broken his law, that we deserve death and hell and separation from him. But that's not what God wants because he sent his son, Jesus, to pay the price for our sins, to buy our freedom. And that that we have a choice in that. We can either stay like the prodigal son, or we we can be like the prodigal son and stay where he was uh, for a long time in in in, in, in rebellion against God. Or we can recognize our sin. And we can turn to God. Yeah. And so as I preach, these are the people. These are about, they're about 30 people who were saved that night. Yeah, so uh, I just kind of want to talk about that. Like, like Paul was saying, we got back to the hotel, and I told Paul, I said, this must have been what Paul and Peter talked about in the, the book of Acts. It was a Friday night at probably 9.30 when we got there, you think? Yeah, 8.39. There, there's there's Hindu rituals going on with those loudspeakers in the background. Uh, and these pictures don't really do it justice. That, this, this is a pretty wide street. Um, and that street was completely packed where you couldn't even walk on the sides. Uh, Friday night at 9.30, and, and people are, are waiting there. No, no telling how long because Narendra was, was late picking us up. <laughs> yeah. um, they probably were there an hour or two before we got there. Um, and they dedicated their night to being there to hear the word of God um, with no church building. Because like Paul said, uh, we got to pray over the dirt where they had a church, but they were growing too much. So they deconstructed the church. Um, and they were going to build a bigger church right next to it. So off to your right would have been a, a dirt plot uh, where they were going to build their next church. And they're sitting here waiting to hear the gospel. Um, there's, there's a kid climbing on the, on the roof just to get a picture of, of Paul and the environment. And it was just amazing to see um, just everything taking place. And like I said, I, I feel like this is, you know, when you see the Holy Spirit move, this is what it looks like. And we, we oftentimes, you know... We, we had to beg people to come to churches here in America, and mm-hmm. they're sitting there almost, and we could have kept preaching all night long, and they would have been there, mm-hmm. um, they wouldn't have left, so it was amazing to see Paul just preach the gospel in its simplicity, preach the prodigal son, um, and just see the spirit move, and I think this is really when we started seeing the spirit start moving in, yeah. in, a, in, a, in, a, in a mighty way throughout the trip, everything after this was just powerful. Yeah. Um, so, all that worship music's going on in the background, I'm preaching the gospel, uh, I'm talking, and, and working with an interpreter is different because you never really get going. I mean, like now I, I have the uh, uh, you know the ability to just keep going, keep going, keep going. You have to stop every about ten or fifteen words and let him interpret it if you get that many in, right? And so you just kind of don't get to really build anything, but but you do kind of get a flow after a while after you've done it a few times. It helps, uh, and so I'm 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 preaching hard. I'm doing you know I'm speaking about Christ and, and the forgiveness that's available. And my watch goes off. I mean, now I've got signal over there, so it's not a big deal. Um, but my watch goes off, and I can tell, and there's, it's turned down. It's playing a song. And I'm, I got my hand up like this. I'm like, what the heck? So he's interpreting part of it. I'm like, what song is playing now? How did it even come on? So I click it off, finish. Uh, we get through the night, um, get through the service, and we're on the way back. And I'm like, I wonder what song was playing on my watch. And so I pull it up. It's a song I've never heard, never looked up, nothing. But the name of the song, the title of the song, is When God Speaks. Yeah. I, I get chill bucks every time I tell that story. It's just, it, it was crazy. I mean, amazing. And, and that's really what God was doing. It wasn't Paul speaking, it was God speaking. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and these, uh, these, some of the kids that were there, um, you know, at, at the end of the service. And uh, I don't know if any of them were saved or not. I don't think so. Most of them were at the back, but... Um, 
it was a really powerful day. All right, so day five. This is Saturday. Yeah, yes, yes Saturday. <laughs> I lost track of time bad Well, there. I thought I preached on Tuesday, and I actually preached on Friday, so the time, the 12-hour time difference kind of gets to you a little bit. But Yeah, uh, I guess it really didn't matter. But uh, this was a day we took a trip. Mm-hmm. We only went 60 miles, but it took us three and a half hours to drive that 60 miles. That's one way. Multiple vehicles because one vehicle couldn't get up the mountain. <laughs> You're going to see that. We had some overweight guys in there, but um, when we had to get into a, a, an auto, what was that, an auto bike or whatever auto, it was, yeah. an auto, and that, that couldn't get us up the, the mountain either. So. so this is where we got stuck. We got stuck on the yeah. mountain. The, the car just wouldn't go no more. It's not because of Jeremy. It's because of me and Jared who were sitting in the back. And so Jared just tried to decide to take a nap on the road. And uh, until they finally got an auto for us, mm-hmm. um, and you know, and, and Jeremy, um, this Take, is just when nature calls. Page. It's okay. Um, <laughs> There's a good picture of everything yeah. in the background. You can yeah. just kind of see what the countryside looks like. Yeah. Okay, this is us in the auto um, going up the mountain. The mountain, and you can play that video. Here, just grind down. This little engine that could. There's a few times where Paul and Jared actually had to get out and start pushing it. So yeah. Make it up a hill. Like, why can't we just walk this? They just live with my. So, um, so once we get to the top, this is the church that we get to. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a church very, uh, uh, very poor, yep. uh, no education. The the I mean, there's there's a there, the literacy rate within India itself is about seventy percent, at, at least somewhat. Uh, this is like zero percent. These people don't yeah, understand. There was there was men wearing you know skirts, tribal skirts, and this you know not not fully even clothed in the back, and it was just. You could tell this was a very impoverished area, and this is where Jared preached that 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 last yeah, picture. Hang on to that one. No, you're fine. That was that was just where Jared had preached, and very uh, we felt like that was a very oppressed uh, area. Um, so just yeah, and uh, dogs even joined us up on the stage yep. that day. So fighting dogs. <laughs> and then this is the next, uh, just down the bottom of the mountain, we stopped, and I preached here yep. at this little village. There weren't many people here um, for this day, and we. we uh, it, this one was a different service. It wasn't quite as set up as the ones we've been yeah. been at before, but um, we just finished up that that's Saturday, and then we took a three and a half hour drive back. and the And the yeah. reason why it's that long <laughs> is because there's so many things and people and animals and mo- motorcycles and trucks and everything on the road. Plus, um, sometimes there's just no road. You get, you get driving, and there's there's a, missing a big section of road, and we just drive to, down into the pothole and back out again. So. Um, day six is Sunday, uh, two services that day and a really cool, uh, baptism service. Yeah. So this is, uh, I preached first this day. I didn't always preach first. I that's the only time I preached <clears throat> first. Um, I didn't like to preach first, but anyway, <laughs> so this, uh, this is, uh, the early morning service. Uh, the building is packed. There mm-hmm. are people sitting on the stage. There are people outside on, on this side of the building. There are a bunch of men out here and there are on the back side, the doors open, and there, there are people out, out that back, too. Yeah. Um, so, and this is, I just want to backtrack real quick, probably day five or day four, Jared, you know, Paul was taking a nap, and Jared and I were talking, and we were supposed to preach every other time, you know, it was alternate, you know, you know me, Jared, Paul, and Paul and I were just, or Jared and I were just discussing, and we just start, saw, you know, the spirit moving amongst Paul. We saw how effective Pastor Paul was being in preaching the gospel, and Jared said, let's just get out of the way. And, and we both agreed to it and just just supported Pastor Paul and the rest of the trip. Um, and this church was amazing. This was Sunday morning. Uh, again, it's hot. The kids were on the stage because there's no other room to, uh, to sit. All these women, there's probably, what, 100 women in there. Mm-hmm. Um, they got handwritten hymns. That was one of the amazing things we, we witnessed was that, you know, they'd get up and sing a hymn or a song, and it would be handwritten. Uh, they didn't have worship uh, sheet music or anything like that. And then off to your right, that door that's open, um, there, was, there was probably 20, 20 plus men out there 
um, just waiting to hear the gospel and waiting to hear the word preached. And it was just amazing to see on a Sunday morning uh, how packed it was in church and uh, they having to keep the doors open because there's, there's people outside waiting to hear. And that pulpit's <clears throat> very wobbly. Yeah. And uh, I got little Jimmy. There's a picture of him in a minute. But little, little Jimmy's hanging onto the, my leg and walking around that pulpit. I'm afraid he's going to knock it over. Uh, but uh, anyway, able to preach. I, I preached uh, the story of Lazarus, mm -hmm. uh, how Jesus uh, brought Lazarus back from the dead and uh, Jesus' power over death. And so... Um, this there's a couple of videos here. Uh, this one right here. Reciting scripture together. And then the next video of, of worship. was one of the shorter songs. I think it only lasts about 15 minutes. So most of their songs were very long. Uh, and then the next picture there, there's Jimmy right there. <laughs> this was while Paul was preaching in the middle of his sermon. Jimmy's just sitting there <laughs> hanging out and waiting for the pulpit to be knocked over. It never did fall over though. Right? Yeah, it never did fall over. Yeah. I was afraid to get foot yeah. smashed in there. But Did you um, know he was down there when you were preaching? Yeah. yeah. I feel him tugging on my leg. <laughs> um, so next picture, we all need one of these in our homes. The Bible alarm. Bible alarm. Okay. Bible alarm. I, we were like, okay, what is Bible alarm? Right. I mean, got to figure out what this is. <clears throat> it's, this box um, is set up to go off every hour, and it reads Scripture every hour to the entire neighborhood. And so we all, all need scripture. Bible alarm. Yeah. I don't know where you get one at. <laughs> Dollar Tree near you. And then we got to, we, all of us got to pray for mm. different people. Uh, this is just one guy who kind of came up. He was very touched and very moved. Um, at this service, um, there, was one, there was one man who was outside. I mean, there were, there were several ladies that were saved inside, but there was one man that was outside. We did, the, the, none of the church knew who he was. They had seen him around, but they didn't know who he was. That day, outside, he heard the gospel, accepted Christ, and rejected Hinduism, and I'm going to baptize him here in a minute. Yeah. So just another neat thing before we get to the baptism is, is the repentance there is completely different than it is here in the States. Oftentimes we'll have a pastor invite people up front to come down and, and say a prayer or fill out a card, kind of like the cachet that Paul uses a lot. But uh, there they would just sit on their knees and repent to the Lord. So I don't know how many people gave their lives to the Lord, but right. it was just amazing to see that they would just repent right there. And they wouldn't come forward to talk to a man. It was them crying out to the Lord. Um, and that was just really powerful to see was uh, the repentance to the Lord and not to some, some man that's going to tell them to do this, this, and that. Um, and it was amazing to see that, just the way they repented. So. And one of the things that, about it is, is is that we have freedom here that you and I, can we can ask Jesus to be our Savior. And, the, and people will be happy for us. Your parents will be happy. Mm -hmm. Your grandparents, mm -hmm. your neighbors, people in the church, they'll be happy for you. There, if you accept Jesus Christ, you, you have the, the, I mean, there's a, a high probability that your parents may reject you, that mm -hmm. you, your parents may kill you okay. if you trust Jesus, mm -hmm. that your friends may kill you, yeah. that your, neighbor, your neighbors may kill you because you accepted Jesus. It's not, they don't play games like, mm -hmm. you know, it's not a joke. It's, it's, it's real stuff. Yeah. Uh, this is some of the baptism here. Got a video, just kind of a montage of, of some of the people getting baptized. baptized you, my brother. <laughs> Did you see the head shake? Watch the head shake. I'll tell you about it in a minute. Hey. Married in baptism. That's the guy. 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 That's the gu
Amen. I'm from that profession of faith. My sister, I baptize you in the name of the Father. Have you trusted in Jesus for salvation? Amen. Amen. I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mary with Christ in baptism. Now watch Jared not hold this woman's nose. <laughs> and on that profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister. He just about drowned her. And this lady's afraid we're all going to drown. <laughs> You can see him just kind of squeal a little bit there, but one, one thing that we kind of talked about yesterday, Paul, we, we took uh, Narendra's nephew to swim with us one day, and that was the first time he'd ever been in a swimming pool. He didn't know how to swim, he didn't know how to float. Um, so some of these people had never probably been underwater before, and it was, it's kind of weird that they started flopping, but I think that they'd never been underwater, and it was just powerful to see. This, this was, again, uh, where you saw that bucket of water overflowing was right behind this. Mm -hmm. uh, that bucket wasn't there that Sunday. It was weird that that bucket was yeah. just there that one day, and we don't know why, but um, this is where the uh, baptism was at, and it was really more or less the, the, the community square, and it's amazing to see a public baptism, uh, baptistry, in the public square where, where Christianity is opposed of and, and oftentimes per, persecuted of. And uh, you could just see everybody so excited to see baptism. It was just amazing. One, one person there I want you to notice is the guy on the left. That's Father. Mm -hmm. He's the pastor of the church. I don't know his real name, so we're just going to call him Father. That's what we did all week. Um, but it is, it's not an uncommon thing. It's a friendship thing for men to hold each other's hand. It's okay there, yeah. Yeah. okay? It's not like it is in America where that means something else. So, okay. so Bill, you, and Rod, y'all can start holding hands then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there, there is no same-sex marriage or anything like that nope. there. Nope. Um, that's totally illegal in the culture. So mm -hmm. that's not a big thing there. It's just a sign of friendship. Yep. And, and Father held our hand a lot and drug us around and uh, told us what to do. And <laughs> so, it, was, it was all right. So that's the first worship service. After that, we are sopping wet. They didn't really tell us what to bring to get to baptize. I brought a pair of shorts and a shirt, and apparently that is not what you baptize in. Mm -hmm. So I had to wear that back to the hotel where we changed real fast. Um, so this is the second worship service. Um, I think Jared preached this one, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremy and I both were talking about this one. We don't even remember this one very yeah. well. But, <laughs> but uh, Jared, Jared preached here. This is Narandra's church. Both of those... Um, they, they were part of the same church. They had two churches. Um, this is like the home church mm -hmm. where Narendra lives. And that's his wife, Sheba, in the, the pink in the front there. It's the baby right next to her. Yeah. Little Jimmy. Little Jimmy. And so, um, and then after this worship service, we went back and got changed. And that night, <coughs> we took the, the orphans there out to, out to supper. Mm -hmm. So, um, the last day, um, we went to... Um, uh, Kakanada, which is a, a larger city, and we went shopping and did some things, and then that night we did a, uh, a worship service, and this was outside. Um, I'll let Jeremy talk about it just a second. Yeah, so this, again, was the last night, and we were kind of just, you know, it, it was an exhausting trip, but again, this was Monday night at uh, 9 o'clock at night, um, other things taking place. Um, this is an outdoor church service right where we did the baptist, uh, baptisms. Uh, and again, you can see the tent to the right, the, the colorful tent that's just overflow. Um, Jared was trying to take some pictures down the alleyway because there was men lined up ready to hear Paul preach down the alleyway. They were popping off artillery shells for fireworks because they were just so <laughs> excited uh, that they were having a church service. Uh, I think probably five minutes into Paul's sermon, they lit an artillery shell <laughs> off. Um, and, 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 and Jared couldn't take any pictures because it was so smoky of the background, but uh, one thing, you preached over the prodigal son on that as well, right? Yeah. Uh, we, we were probably just so ex exhausted and, and maybe just unaware. But at the end, uh, looking back now, I think we, we all should have preached that night because they would have stayed there all night long yeah. waiting for us. They, when we got done with this service, uh, they didn't want to leave. It was almost like they didn't want to get up and, and, and walk off. And uh, it was just 
again, it was powerful to see that they would have stayed there and listened to us preach all night if we would have had messages for them. And there's that big speaker. Yeah, loud, <laughs> loud speaker. And you, there's a couple more pictures there. There's one of me preaching. Again, this night, I mean, people, I mean, we probably say 15 people. I don't know how many exactly uh, gave their lives to the Lord just because they wouldn't come forward and they just would repent right there. But we saw, we saw salvation taking place this night as well, and it was just powerful. Yeah. And then after we were done, we had supper with uh, Narendra and his family, and they gave us some gifts. Um, our wives were supposed to wear their uh, outfits, but they didn't. And so, not that they fit real well yeah, anyway. Amber's was dirty because she's been wearing it since I've gotten home. So, so <laughs> uh, we had to wash it once. <laughs> and then we, uh, as we were leaving, there, you know, this is, that right there is a gutter. Um, that's where everything from your house drains out into that. Everything that you put in there that you don't want in the middle of the street goes in there. I don't know a better way to say it. Anyway, um, we, we put our initials there. They put their initials, Jared, <laughs> Jer Jeremy, and then I wrote my name. And they're like, we just put our initials. You wrote your name. And so I found a stick and wrote my name in it, but we're, we, we left our mark there, uh, right next to the toilet, basically. Yeah. So um, we saw lots of things. We've seen some stuff, folks. Um, people, they don't have, I mean, there's some indoor plumbing but it just runs out in the street. And so if you need to go to the restroom, you can just pull over the side of the road and go mm -hmm. one or two. It's great. And they'll just, I mean, we drove up past the guy going to the bathroom on a bridge and he just waved at us. <laughs> like, what? Hey, what's up guys? And then we walked through a guy's shower. I mean, yeah, yeah, he was, he was outside. taking a shower. So they were, they had road construction getting to a church or the church that we were at. And this guy was in his backyard taking a shower and we're walking through his backyard because we had to get around to the street. I, he just starts talking to us and he got full of soap and he just wants to start talking to us. So. I'm just glad he's taking a bath. Uh, yeah, that's only in India. <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of packed up that night, prepared to head home. And as we're driving down the road, of course, a uh, flat. And so... I did the brave thing. I stood out in the road and blocked traffic while uh, uh, Jared changed it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I wasn't brave. Um, I just took the pictures. But, there, but I did stand out there far enough so in case they would, you know, he wouldn't get run over. He did appreciate that. But, but uh, Jared knows what he's doing, so I let him do it. Um, and then this is a picture of just one of the airports. This is Mumbai. I thought it was really pretty. So uh, that, Some of the airports we were in were not very nice. That one was a nice one. So. Um, and then, of course, we were just simply glad to be home. Um, we kind of went through that pretty quick, and there's a lot more that we could say. Sure. Um, and so let me, let us, let's do this. We've got some time left. How about some questions? You got some questions for us? We'll be glad to answer. Or Jeremy will. Yes. Uh, it's Telugu. Um, there, that's kind of the the language of the area. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really second or third most used language in, in um, India. And they do have, so they have a Telugu, like ancient translation or script or phonics, I guess. Um, and then they do write it out in English alphabetical letters, but it wasn't in English. There may have been some signs that, um, I don't say, but maybe one out of every 10 people we encountered knew any English at all. Mm -hmm. And it, just in the area we were at, I kind of did some research on that. Um, and the tele, tele, or Andhra, Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh is yeah. where we were at, uh, and it didn't feel like the literacy rate was three quarters, did it? I mean, it yeah. felt like the literacy rate was a lot less than that. So, um, yeah. and, and a lot of those pictures on the on the highway was a main, almost like an interstate type of uh, highway that we were on, um, and that's where a lot of the commerce is. So that's probably some of those signs that you've seen there. But we were in the airport, and there was a, there was a TV going on, and say, it come on, breaking news, and then everything was in, I mean, it was English breaking news, and everything else is in Telugu or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, well, okay. this uh, not real breaking, because I don't know <laughs> yeah. what's going on. Yeah. This guy holding two snakes up, I'm like, I hope they're just not invading yeah. the country. Yeah. So, yeah. Could I tell what they were saying? Absolutely not. Yeah, no, no, we couldn't. <laughs> but some, no. there was some uh, English that they did speak. Yeah. So, Paul, I, this wasn't planned, but Jesse, yes, sir. Yes. No, it's a thing still. Yeah. I mean, um, 
it's a, it's a religious type thing to put a dot on your forehead. So if you see someone who's Indian and they have a dot on their forehead, typically that is a religious act because they're, they're, they worship Hinduism. But sometimes they'll use that also as beauty marks. just beauty marks. Yeah. So it's really hard to tell what they were, because there were people in churches who had them and were like, okay, I don't know if you're a believer or you just have to show up here, you, you're, you know, want to take your picture with white people. I don't know, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think some of that caste system, we didn't really recognize it, but, but Narendra, he could definitely spot who was the Dalit or I don't know what all the... The, the caste system, Brahmin was the, the head of that caste system, and, and we were sitting in a restaurant, and I asked Narendra a little bit about that, and he said, well, that's, he's a Brahmin, and he's, you know, did all of this, so they definitely recognize it. I know the caste system's outlawed in India, but it's still recognized, highly, highly recognized, so. All right, uh, let me get this guy right here. Um, uh, how, many people, how many people do you live in India? Uh, 1.4 billion people live in India. Uh, in the area we were at, Andhra Pradesh has about 34 million, I think is what I saw. Uh, this, and that's a province. So there's a lot of people there, a lot more of the people than yeah. live here. <laughs> um, I think I saw her. What, what was your question? How many people do you baptize? We, bapt- we baptized five people, mm-hmm. uh, but we kind of guesstimate there were about 50 people that we know of that were saved. So, yeah. Were you scared? Was I scared? No, not really, except for when we were driving on the road. <laughs> <laughs> They will decorate for Christmas. They don't know what it means necessarily. Not most of them, but they will decorate for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what they were when I first saw the picture because Jared took them and then sent them to us. I'm like, oh my gosh, what are we eating? But it was just a bird. What were you going to ask? No problems. We didn't hardly see authorities. So yeah. this is an area that I think is fairly out, on a, kind of an outlier area. Um, there were some, but, yeah. I mean, the real danger is not really for us. It's for Narendra and his family being left behind there because they're the ones. I mean, matter of fact, after J- Jared's first trip mm-hmm. there, they surrounded, they're, they're, the people from the community surrounded the church never ki- going to kill him and his father. But somehow... Something changed. Yeah, so that was something that Jared was talking about in, in Mumbai. I think we were in Mumbai Airport on the way back at 2 o'clock in the morning, and Jared was just talking to keep us awake and kept talking and kept mm-hmm. talking. And, uh, he was talking about that. He said, you really think about these things. He said, people don't go on mission trips to India to proclaim the gospel. You usually think of, of them pitting in a water well or, or maybe doing a medical uh, mission trip, but we never had one issue preaching the gospel, even with that, that place where Paul was preaching, the Hindu rituals were going on behind him. Uh, I think more people were really fascinated with us as Americans because, and I asked Naranja that one day when we were in the pool, I said, why, why Americans? And he said, because they tie it to Christianity. Uh, they think that you're Christian, and they think everybody in America is Christians. Um, and I, I want to speak to that a little bit on, oh, with, with the hotel. There was a guy that was Hindu working at the hotel I mean, he had an American dollar. I shared this in our Sunday school class on Sunday. He had an American dollar that somebody had gave him six years previous from us getting there. Um, And all he wanted to talk about was Christmas and talk about America. Um, So they oftentimes, you know, associate America with Christianity. And uh, Christmas, do you want to talk about that? The month of December is a time where you're able to preach the gospel, right? Right. So next, we're we're planning to go back next year, and we're we we want to take some other couples with us. Um, but when I say that, we're going to be kind of selective in that because it is not an easy trip. Uh, we are going to be tr- try to try to make things a little easier than what we went through. But um, it's going to it's it's a trip. I mean, it's it's a mission trip. You, it's not it's not sightseeing trip. It's a mission trip that you you are going to do ministry there. You're going to be praying for people who are broken, uh, people who are dying, uh, people who have nothing. Um, you're going to preach the gospel. I mean, it's it's that kind of trip, um, but Christmas is a time, the reason why I go back there in December is because it's more open. You can speak about Christ somewhat, um, and so it's a quite a bit more open during that time. Yeah. So, um, You had your hand up for a while. Um, I know this, and you can say it with me if you can. One Danalu. See, you're doing pretty good. One Danalu means praise the Lord. Or at least that's what they told us. So, yeah. It was just a concrete box, basically, and they just put water in there. 
Oh, maybe we, we baptized need, in there. We need one of those in front of the church, Paul. No, uh, that's a good thing. I'm glad you brought that up. But he asked if the statues were only gold. Um, no, there were, there, were, there were golden statues and things like that, but they weren't made of real gold. They were just paint. Um, but these, there were statues everywhere. And there was one in that, in that last church service. The guy was standing up. He had his finger up like this. He was the founder of the school, and they made him a statue. So I'm not sure when we're getting ours, but anyway. Maybe Did you have a question back there? I don't think so. They didn't really explain that to us very well. Yeah. I, I don't think there's. But we, yeah. we did get showered in other days with the orange ones, I, but it was yeah. mainly yellow and orange. But we don't know where they were getting those flowers from because we never saw <laughs> yeah. any flowers. But I, yeah, I, I never know. saw I any flowers growing. Yeah, just, uh, they just kept throwing them at my feet when I'm stepping Every on them. That's it. But uh, yeah, <laughs> in just a little bit. Any, any you guys have a question? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I don't got any footwear on. <laughs> I'm, wear, I'm wearing shoes because I got bit by ants in India. So no, I, I didn't <laughs> get bit by ants. But so you don't wear shoes in a house or a church uh, in India. Um, uh, I think part of that is because, I mean, your feet are going to track dirt and things. And so they just kind of keep it as a sacred kind of place in, in that respect. Um, I, and I thought sp- it was going to be really weird, and, and it really was, and it was it was kind of honorable to do and to take your shoes off before you were going inside, and, and um, just anywhere we'd go, that somebody would pick up our shoes and try to care, take care of them for us, and it was really kind of special. I thought I thought it was yeah. going to be really weird because I talked to John Mitchell about this, and I said I don't even talk to somebody on the phone in my house with no shoes on. It's just weird, um, but it was it was it was an honorable thing. It was really neat. <clears throat> All right, so we've got just a few minutes here. We're going to let you guys come and look at this stuff in just a second. Um, but I want to—I just want to share just a couple of minutes about an opportunity for you to be involved in. Um, so the church there, um, they have some orphans they're taking care of. It really wasn't a plan type thing uh, that they weren't necessarily trying to create an orphanage or anything mm-hmm. like that. But it became that way because there were, there were several children who just didn't have any, any place to go. Um, <laughs> And their families either were gone or they were so poor they couldn't take care of them. And so they've decided to create a, an orphanage in, a, in, a, in some sense. Uh, basically, people in the church are taking care of these kids right now. Um, and, but they only want to go to 12. They don't want to go any further than that. Uh, Jared was a little bit concerned about that because that's, you know, they started out in mm-hmm. South Africa starting an orphanage for a few kids. And it's at 600 and they can't take care of them all. So... Um, but staying at 12 is a possibility that we can, we can take care of. And so um, if you want to participate in there, I've got pictures of some of the kids. Um, and you can give through the church office this way. And we can mm-hmm. kind of talk about that a little bit more yeah. uh, privately and individually. But the, I've got a picture of 10 different kids that are here. And they've got one more that's not on here. And then they're trying to, they want to get 12 kind of yeah. as a... 12 apostles, and, you know, kind of thing. Anyway, um, but it, it'd be about 30 bucks a month. Um, for to, to to provide for them, okay. Um, that really is not going to cover everything they need, but thirty bucks a month, a dollar a day, will help them to be able to feed them, educate them, take care of them. And so, if you're interested in looking at some of these kids and seeing some of their stories that are on here, uh, realize they're written by Naranda, who who knows some English, quite quite a bit of English, but sometimes doesn't. They don't always come out quite right. Um, so it may not quite make sense to you all. But um, uh, so I think most of them probably over did. the next month, we'll, we'll have Naren to update those pictures with color. And, and we'll, we'll probably create something, a, a pamphlet or a brochure that we can send out to, to people within the church um, to get that going. Because it's, Naren, just, it's, he doesn't have a laptop. He's doing all this from his phone. It's just so crude. Um, so we think we'll probably update all of that and then get, get a little bit of more of a plan together on how we can give to those, but I thought it was really neat that they only wanted 12, you know, that they didn't want to get so big that they wouldn't be able to take over the kid, take care of the kids, so uh, we'll kind of recreate that brochure for Narendra and take care of that over the next month or so. so. All right, so um, <laughs> how do we want to do this? Okay, so kids, you, ki- you kids right here, if you want to try, huh? Yeah, we're going to do a road at a time. But if you want to try, this is cheeky, which is a sesame seed, like honey, sugar thing. It's not great. I'm just going to tell you that. And then there's thumbs up. 
um, to try too. So if you want to try that, you can stand up, this first row can stand up, and just come make your way over here, and you can get one. It has a bit of an aftertaste, so. Yes. They do. They do. They have an offering box. One of the, I guess it was Sunday morning, um, we watched people who had nothing put money in this offering box. Yeah. You know, um, percentage wise, they get far more than we did in America, in our church. I mean, far more. I mean, we may give a, a, a half a percent more as much as they do because what they're doing is giving most of what they have. So what, what do you think, Paul? Probably 90% of the people at the church were giving into the, the offering, and it was yeah. just amazing to see what's the statistic, maybe 20% in America that, that tithe, maybe less than oh, that. Oh, yeah, no, uh, le- far less than that. There's probably le- less than 20% of uh, Christians. Yeah. Uh, and I think that was just an amazing thing to see was, was with no resources, no finances, no anything, that the Lord was still moving, and the, Lord, the churches were overflowing. And it just kind of made me think a little bit. We have so many resources here in the States. Um, and yet so little movement and, and they have nothing. I mean, they are literally, they were, we were praying for people over and over again for jobs uh, because they were about to lose everything because they were so indebted because they had nothing to, uh, to give and, and they were still there with, with expectations. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, there's some money on the table too that um, just, you can see some of their money. Uh, Gandhi is on every dollar bill that mm-hmm. they've got. Um, and there's a $500 bill there. Sounds like a lot, but the, the exchange rate is 82 to one. So that's like six bucks. Uh, six American bucks. Yep. So there you go. But you can see some of that stuff too. Um, and there's a Telugu Bible that's up here. Yep. It's in, in Telugu. You can kind of see that. There. Actually, there's a couple up there. Jeremy put his up there along with mine. And you can kind of see some of the language, which is. We don't know what book is he. doesn't make any sense to try to read. <clears throat> I just told you why I was in my feet. <laughs> I forgot. So, Paul, I got a question for you. That you know, what, what was the most memorable thing that you encountered there in India? I don't know that we planned that, but I think. Well, the most memorable thing is that that night. I mean, that's, that's the thing that sticks out to me by far the most. Um, but I think other than, like, just that worship service or, or that, um, it's the kindness that, that, that was shown to us by the people. I mean... It, it was hard to leave. It was hard to leave because the people were so kind and so loving and, and so hungry for the truth. And, and so um, that, that, that's what really stuck out to me. What stuck out to you? Yeah, I, I would say the same thing there. Is, and that was a question I wrote down kind of preparing for tonight was, you know, can we experience that in America? And, you know, we, we, we do want to bring these things back and, and, you know, overflow that here in Calvary. But can we, can we experience that still? And I know we're in a different state in stage in our church, you know, in the churches in America, they're in their infant stages. I mean, they, they, they probably, what, first and second generation churches that, mm-hmm. that have been started there all over the place. And it's exciting to see that. But, you know, I, I don't know. That's a question that I have remaining is, you know, can we still experience that here in America where we see the spirit moving in a mighty way? And obviously the answer is yes. But mm-hmm. uh, it's just something that stuck with me was, was just the, the, it almost seemed like the book of Acts everywhere we went in yeah. um, the spirit moving. So. You know, and, and one of the things that these churches, uh, one of the things that encouraged me is, is most of these pastors of these churches were very young. Mm-hmm. And so I thought, this, this is a great opportunity. There's a seminary there, there that's those pastors. Some of those were a part of that seminary. And some of those pictures that Jared, uh, that you saw with Jared and those people that were there, those pastors that were there, they're in the seminary. So there's not many in the seminary right now uh, that Gospel Outreach, uh, you know, helps with. But, I mean... They're, they're, they want to learn. They want to grow. They want to yeah. know. And the thing about it is, is that it's, it's good that they're young. They're not, it's not, they're not pastors that we're going to be like, yeah, well, hey, next month I, I'm going in view of a call to this church across the country. No, they're going to stay in that place, in that church for the rest of their life. And if there's going to be a continual church in that area, they're going to have to have a son yeah. Or raise up someone in the church to be the pastor of that church for it to continue on. Yeah, I think most of the churches we went to was a second generation. It was a son. 
that was preaching in place of his father now, and that was a powerful thing to see. I, I think three churches in, in that fourth church that I, you know, the last church I preached at, even he was connected to the, to the father of, of Narendra. So it was just a generational thing that took place. And even, you know, Pastor Jared talked about how we got to continue those generational things. And uh, it was amazing how Jared and Gospel Outreach even got connected with them in India. Yeah. I don't know how that all worked out. Uh, but I know Jared and, and them are leading uh, them in their Bible um, college. So that's how we all got connected to these guys in India. So they reached out to, to, to Jared and to Trevor and Gospel Outreach. And um, uh, they're doing a Bible school based off of Gospel Outreach's content. Yeah, and, so. and I have a heart for these pastors because they just, they're not trained. Mm-hmm. They have a desire. They don't know. And so what we're trying to do is all the notes that we that we taught from to the, in the conference we're trying to put together in a way that they can translate and give to these pastors so that they'll have them. Uh, they can look at them and they can learn from those notes. And then we're going to do something a little different. Next time we go, we'll do another conference and try to train them in some different areas. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think it's very important. I mean, we're not only trying to evangelize people, but trying to shape these pastors so that they understand the gospel. They understand the ministry. They understand how to reach out and how to develop people for the kingdom. And so... Um, this is an area, um, if you just kind of look it up, Andhra Pradesh is an area that um, there are some, like, like Narendra's church, there are some gospel churches that mm-hmm. are there. And so it can be a, we could see a great movement across India just from training these pastors. And so um, I'm excited about what the future holds for that. So, all right. Um, you can be like the kids, you can come to <laughs> And try if you'd like to, and you can see some of the stuff on the table, and then we can answer some of your questions. If you want to look at some of the pictures of the kids or anything like that, I've got the packet right here. So, all right, good, good. We done. You, you know.